Our sailors in the ocean race face so many challenges, whether it's sleep deprivation, sunburn, freezing temperatures, or just the relentless physicality of the race. But there's another challenge as well, the simple challenge of getting from A to B. And well, it should be simple. You should just point the boat where you want it to go towards the finish line and just hold on for the ride. But there's a little bit more to it than that. Let's imagine that we've got the wind coming from the top of the table and sweeping down. And our boat is in the middle and trying to get over here. This is the mark. This is the headland that they've got to turn around or maybe even the finish line. From here, the boats will have an easy time. They'll be able to point straight there and they'll be going at quite a speed. This is actually the best angle. With the wind on the side doing a beam reach, this is when we'll see pretty much the top speeds. Now, if the mark wasn't here, if the finish line wasn't here, in fact, it was down, downwind of where the boats were, they'd still be able to get there. They'd turn down and they'd go that way. They'd go slower, but they'd still get there. The challenge is what happens if the mark is at the top, where the wind is blowing from, then things become a little bit trickier. We could point our boat to that mark. We wouldn't get anywhere. Our sails would flap and we'd stop. In fact, we'd probably end up going backwards. That's no good at all. So what do we do? How do we achieve uh, some sort of progression up to the, that point of the table? Well, what we can do is we can sail at a bit of an angle to the wind and we can go backwards and forwards. How do we choose what angle to sail? So what our teams do is theoretically, they, they copy themselves. Imagine you've got three identical boats and the sailors have cloned themselves so they're all gonna perform exactly the same. The three boats will start in the middle of the table and they'll make their way towards that top mark. One of the boats will choose to sail only a few degrees off that beam reach course where they'll be going at maximum speed but they're gonna to have to be sailing an awful lot more miles to zigzag backwards and forwards to get to the top. One of the boats decides, that's stupid. I'm gonna sail the most direct route possible, slightly off from the breeze, and I'll sail much shorter distance, but they'll be going really slow to do it. And our last boat will go somewhere between the three. But who's got it right? You're not gonna to have to wait for the boats to actually get to the top to see who's made the sensible decision. After a, maybe an hour, you can pause. Well, it's all about who's got further up the table, who's got further up the racetrack, who's got closest to that finish point. And whoever's made the journey furthest up has used their speed for good. They've turned their velocity into something efficient. Their velocity made good, their VMG. That's the number that our sailors talk about. It's not just speed, it's not just miles traveled, it's the combination of both. Whoever's got the best VMG will be making the best progress up the table. Then they can zigzag back the other way and continue that before they get to that goal. And their VMG is measured either all the way up into the wind or all the way down. And Olympians will use this all the time because Olympic courses are pretty much either going up into the wind or down. But for the ocean race, we don't just sail in the daytime, we sail all the way through the night, all the way through the weeks, all the way through the year and pretty much every single corner of the globe where the wind is coming from multiple different angles and we've got to get used to them all. So we don't use VMG, we think about something orientated to the course. We talk about VMC, but it works in exactly the same way. Instead of the mark being straight up wind, we could put the mark anywhere. If we put the mark here, all we're gonna do is measure how well a boat from the middle of the table makes its progress to this mark. It could sail just about any angle it wanted to. The only question would be who would get closest this way? And for our sailors, they can model this, they can measure it. And they either do it by real world testing, by experimenting or by computer models, but they can draw a ring, a ring of progress, a ring that represents how far out from that center they're likely to get. And it will simulate the best performance that they can imagine for their boats. They can do multiple rings for different wind speeds. And what they've now built up is something that we call a polar diagram. And using that, they can help decipher the course that's laid in front of them. And that's why you so often see our boats not 
pointing directly to where they need to be. Not pointing to that headland that they're about to round, not even pointing to the finish line, but choosing to sail a different angle just to balance, yes, some extra miles, but a lot more speed as well. It's a really good example of how the sailors in the ocean race don't just need to be physically fit, they don't just need to be brave, but they need to be pretty switched on too.